This gross looking orange just made me think of something. What if you could split a mountain in half? Let's try that. <laughs> Since I'm going to have some base building in the game, one feature that I knew that I had to implement was the ability to sculpt the landscape so that you're able to flatten and sculpt the ground before you place your buildings. I started out with a simple patch of land. Since you won't be playing as a human, but rather a humanoid that is grown out of a tree, I didn't want the players to simply use a pickaxe to dig around. So my first terrible idea was to make him punch the ground, which was fun for about three seconds. It looked rather comical, which doesn't really fit the game. I'm not particularly a fan of grinding in games, and this was immediately feeling very grindy. Especially when I'm building stuff, I want to be able to play around with it and be creative. So my second attempt was much more promising, and it's feeling a lot more like a toy that lets you explore your creativity. So this is looking promising, but it's still a small patch of land. And if I expand it to fit the whole world, every time you start to sculpt, it would kill your performance because it would have to rebuild the entire mesh every single time. So instead the plan is to make a lot of small patches and when you start to sculpt, it will only have to rebuild smaller patches of the landscape. So far the plan is that you'll only be able to change the environment while you're in your own towns. So when you're exploring outside of your town, you'll be forced to think about how you navigate the environment. Other things in the world can change the landscape permanently, like earthquakes or volcanoes, or even if there's a lot of traffic in one place and the ground slowly deforms over time. These are definitely features that are on my wish list, but to begin with, letting the player deform the landscape and making those changes permanent would already be a good starting point. The landscape textures update real time according to how the landscape is forming. This landscape material is fairly basic right now. In fact, we're going to improve it in just a little bit. Before I started working on this feature, I had a decision to make, which I mentioned in my first devlog. The landscape version will feel more like a real world and the modular approach will feel more gamey, but it will give me more control over the level layout. The thing about keeping a loose game design in the beginning is that it can quickly lead you down the wrong path. And what started out as a fantasy RPG might end up a unicorn colonoscopy simulator. And that's why you need to define some keywords about your vision that stays true from the beginning to the end. It's what made you excited about your project in the first place. And when it comes to making difficult decisions, you can look at your keywords for guidance. What inspired me to create this project was the thought of exploring this living, breathing world that evolves and reacts to you. So, a big landscape it is. It does mean that I sacrifice some quality in the level design. It is simply the best fit for my, for my vision. So I started expanding the system to support multiple patches of terrain. Which you would think is straightforward, but this step always causes me a bit of a headache. The patches have to blend together seamlessly. And as you can see, this was not the case for a while. I'm gonna need to access some kind of coordinate system every time I try to manipulate the terrain. With one patch that's easy enough, but with multiple patches things get a little more complicated. This is the part that took me the longest. I went through multiple approaches and settled for something that seemed to work fine and easy to work with. So I have a simple massive XY coordinate for the entire landscape. And every time I update a certain coordinate, I tell the system that any patch that contains this coordinate should update itself. At the moment when you start the game, every patch is generated at the same time, which causes the game to freeze on startup. And eventually the generation will happen in the background over time, so that you can explore seamlessly without the game freezing up every time you load the next patch. 
This is also why I haven't tested any larger than 225 square meters so far. Because waiting for that loading every time I hit play would have slowly driven me insane. Another important missing feature right now is the streaming of new patches as you explore beyond the bounds of the landscape. At the moment you're just stuck with the initial landscape that's generated. It's going to be a critical part of the landscape system to really sell the exploration. It's all about the exploration. Honestly, don't know why I've always been obsessed with exploration in games. I hate exploring in real life. I'm very much an indoors guy. It's a little dull to modify a flat terrain, so I added some simple generated hills. I also kept working on the material. I added some sand by looking at the height of the terrain. So near the shore there is some sand you'll see. I also added some VFX sound and camera shake to really sell that the character is using his powers to reshape the ground. So far you can raise, lower and flatten the ground which should be enough functionality to build towns. There's no limit to how much you can raise and lower the ground right now, which obviously needs to be addressed at some point, because right now you can just make some giant spike, which doesn't really make any sense. All the graphics are still temporary and I haven't really paid any attention to the actual mood of the game right now, which I expect to be a bit more dark and mysterious. For the first biome I plan to take inspiration from Icelandic environments. I'm also looking at Dark Crystal and other 80s fantasy movies. So kind of swamp-like, but without all the annoying water that slows you down. In general, I hope to create an environment that invokes a sense of mystery. The player should be looking at something in the environment and wonder what kind of secrets there is just around the corner. Hopefully an emergent world will promote this sense of discovery and mystery. The landscape will play an important role in all of this. Vegetation, animals, minerals and civilization will favor certain types of landscapes. And when the landscape changes either by the player or natural events, a sort of butterfly effect will change the world's ecosystem. Look at how good the water and clouds are. And that's just default in Unreal with hardly any tweaking. I switched from Unity to Unreal, I don't know, six months ago or something. This stuff still kind of blows me away. Let me find a mounted to split. Well, needs a bit of work. It's a humble beginning for a complex system. There's been quite a few games that claim to have emergent worlds, where all their systems affect each other and create unique situations for the players. I've just never felt like they captured what I imagined the feature would give me. And I still feel like these game worlds are specifically designed for me, rather than its own self-sufficient place where I just happen to be. And all the systems try so hard to expose that they definitely exist. Because God forbid a developer would spend a dime on content that isn't shoved into players' faces. Otherwise it's just a waste of money, right? In order for the world to seem alive and mysterious, at least some of its inner workings needs to be hidden for me to believe that it really exists. I also want to escape to a world where my actions have a permanent effect and where I can form my own personal stories and share them with other players. Something I don't really recall ever experiencing in any other game. At least the way I imagine it. I've probably been gathering ammunition for this project for at least 10 years, playing other games and thinking how I would solve the problem. So yeah, maybe I'll find out why they didn't solve it my way. We'll see. Mm. Before I end the video, I promised to draw one of you from the previous devlog. And I picked Jenny Carlson, whom I definitely have no idea who is. Because of your super high res profile picture, I decided to fill in the blanks just a little bit. 
I warned you it was gonna be in my style, so there you go. That's it for this video. If you like my content, hit that like button. And if you have any questions, there's a comment section down below where you can write comments, apparently. Goodbye. <laughs>